Well, if you're watching this video, you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. Dale Truck is for sale. So I've decided with this video that I'm going to list six steps and maybe a bonus in there somewhere on what it takes to actually sell a vehicle online, at least in the form of a video or in the form of a marketplace ad or something like that. The steps aren't going to be specific to this vehicle necessarily, but it will be a general overview on things that you need to consider when selling your classic car or your daily driver. So let's start with step number one. So step number one obviously is we've got to show our audience that the vehicle starts. This is Dale the truck, small block Chevy, fuel injection. I have no doubts, but this will be the first start of this truck in 2024. So the battery's all charged up. Let's walk around and hit that key. That was pretty painless. I'm not gonna let it run inside the shop here for very long until I have an opportunity to get my wife's car out and get the Yugo out of the way. And we'll pull this thing out and let it come up to temperature outside uh, in the yard. And then we can do a little bit of a walk around. You can hear it running a little bit longer. Uh, it's so hard to do it inside here because I don't want to get the fumes. But this is just going to be a general overview. You want to tell your customers while it's running that there are no noises, there are no leaks, there are no issues uh, underneath. And we will get to all of that under the hood later on in the video. So for now, let's get the Crown Vic and the Yugo out of the way. And we can pull Dale the truck out and back it outside and get this thing up to temperature. That wasn't so bad. We, uh, I had to get out and adjust the mirrors so that I didn't take off the side of the truck over here on the side of the garage door. 100% transparency, guys, just like I do in every video. Yeah, Dale has a little bit of a leak coming out of the engine, even though the engine's been rebuilt. Uh, there's a small little leak. I think it's a base pan that's leaking here. This is the power steering. The power steering box leaks, and uh, I'll be talking about that later on in the video. So we do have a couple little leaks here. It's a small block Chevy, guys. They're born that way. So there he is outside the garage for the first time since November last year. And this is being recorded in February, near the end of February. Uh, yeah, sounds good. No issues. And yes, it's full of junk. This is where I store all of my uh, recyclables, as well as a lawn tractor to keep it up out of the, uh, off the floor in the garage, taking up valuable space. So once this thing gets up the temperature, I want it to go through that cycle. Uh, I'm going to clean off the back of the truck with all the recyclables and get the lawn tractor off there. And uh, that way I can go over everything about this truck for step number two. Okay. So number two is we want to fix what needs fixing. Pretty self-explanatory. You don't want to be selling a truck with major issues. I mean, granted, this thing is a 77, almost 50 years old. So there's bound to be a few little things like the oil dripping out of the engine. I mean, like I said, that's common guys. You buy a small block Chevy, you're going to have dripping oil. Uh, let me show you a couple of the small things that need to be fixed on Dale that I am going to fix before I sell it. So in one of my last videos, I'll link it right up here that I had on Dale, the truck, we replaced the heater core. So that's one of the upgrades that we've done on this truck. It started leaking, so we tore the carpet out and we got all that dry. And now we've got to put the carpet back in. So here's the carpet uh, that we've got out of Dale the truck. It's got to go back in, which means the seat has to come out and we've got to get everything kind of reversed back in the way we took it out. Not a big job. I'm going to do that. In fact, that's what I'm doing today after I get done shooting this video. Another thing that I've got to fix is that power steering leak. So I do have a kit uh, that is basically, it's a, it's a reseal kit. There's nothing wrong with the power steering. It works great. It doesn't make any noises. 
Uh, it just leaks slowly over time. I took this truck on a 3,000 mile road trip last spring. From the time I left, to the time I got home, it hardly even showed on the dipstick in the power steering that it even went down. But as you can see, she leaks. So we will get that power steering box either rebuilt or replaced. I've got the kit to replace everything, all the seals and stuff. We'll see how that goes. Step number three, clean it. Guys, you don't know how many times I'm browsing through Facebook Marketplace, looking at vehicles, looking at square body Suburbans, looking at square body pickups or F100s or Broncos, whatever I happen to be looking at. Guys are trying to sell them with mud slung up the side of them or garbage in on the floors and just filthy, filthy, filthy. If you're trying to sell a truck or a car, classic car, daily driver, whatever it happens to be, make sure it's clean and presentable. You don't want somebody opening up the door and not even wanting to get in because of the amount of garbage that's inside. Same thing goes for Dale the truck. Although sitting here, you can see the lights are shining off it. It was clean when I put it away, but it's got a nice fine layer of dust on it. Once we get the carpet back into it, we'll give it a good vacuum, clean it up, do the windows, wipe everything down, make sure that it's good and clean. Make sure when you're selling a vehicle that it looks presentable. Make sure it looks the way you would want to look if you were buying it. I know to some people that doesn't mean a lot, but guys, clean your vehicles. Pretty simple. Now we're going to move on to step number four, which is probably at the very least 50% of what's going to help you sell this truck. Step number four, talk about it. Tell us what you did. Tell us what you upgraded. Maintenance, mileage, options, all that sort of stuff. If there's a history on the truck, tell the history. As you guys know, I bought this truck in November of 2019. So I've had it for over four years now. I've done everything I've wanted to do to this truck. Maybe there's still a few more things I would like to do, but I'm on a quest for a square body Suburban. So maybe I'll indulge myself on that end. But this truck came from upstate New York and there's a complete playlist on everything I've ever done on this truck on my YouTube channel right here. So make sure you have an opportunity to go through and see all of that stuff that we've done. Let's go over some of those things right now. The very first things that we had to do was cab corners and rockers. They were rote. They were, there was holes. Uh, they were practically falling apart. Uh, the inner rockers are done as well as the inner cab corners. And we put a patch right here on this fender as well as on the same side on the other fender. One of the things that we did not have to do was brakes. All the brakes were good. They had been recently done. We left them alone. But ball joints, uppers, lowers, tie rods, inners, outers, idler, pitman, all that stuff is new. And we made sure that we had the wheel bearings packed on the front just in case, because we didn't know when the last time they were done. The grease was still there, it looked fairly clean, but we just give it a good little repack, had those done. This truck is static dropped. It's a four, six drop, drop spindles and coils in the front, as well as a flip kit in the rear. It was an entire, the entire kit was Belltech. Why did I go that route? Well, it was the cheapest thing I could buy in Canada at the time. And we did all the work on my YouTube channel. Again, there are videos on it. Once we had that done, we eventually upgraded to 18 inch American Racing Torque Thrust Twos front and rear. We got eight inch in the front, we got 10 inch in the rear. So we did a staggered and I love it. It looks really, really good. Tires, we just put some cheap tires on it, but they've been doing the trick for me. Up front, we've got 225, 55, 18. And in the back, we got 235, 60s. We wanted to get a little extra height because with that drop kit, it looked like those rear springs were sagging a little bit and it kept the ass end of this truck down low and we didn't want no Carolina squat on this long box Chevy. Also, we were missing a couple pieces of trim. This piece along the box here, I found that. It had the black uh, stripe on the inside, but I painted it. I found the paint uh, and we painted that to match the rest of the truck and that gold is 77 only uh, unless you had a Gentleman Jim from 1975 few other exceptions that people may have added in there as well special trim packages we do have a brand new steel wheel uh, as a spare i had to i made sure that i had that for my trip down to georgia and i wanted to make sure that that uh, if anything happened that that size tire would fit front and or rear without causing me any issues with rubbing or tearing up the differential at some point we did upgrade the white 
mirrors to these aluminum or stainless ones. I love these mirrors. They're big. Yes, they don't. A lot of people don't like them, uh, but I uh, I did. I didn't want to be left with putting smaller sport mirrors on here and having three holes in the door. So I just utilized the holes in the door. And I had a friend of mine out in Alberta who found these uh, and picked them up for me, sent them to me, and uh, I think they're a great upgrade on this truck. Also, we had the windows tinted on the sides. Uh, they are legal uh, in the side here in New Brunswick, Canada, and on the back, it is actually a little bit darker, uh, but it helps when you're driving down the road, you get the sun beating on your neck. Uh, you're not burning yourself as you're driving down the road. Yes, this truck has a tonneau cover. Yes, the bows are right here. Uh, they just insert like so. They just kind of pressure fit into place. I've got it rolled up because I had all that crap in the back. And hence, that's where all these snaps are coming from all around the perimeter of the box. It comes in handy. I like the tonneau cover. I don't like the snaps. But if you remove the tonneau cover, again, you're going to have holes all the way around your box. Great thing. Uh, should help with a little bit of fuel economy. Not that you're going to buy this truck for fuel economy. Uh, but speaking of which... We did also upgrade the engine and transmission. The original 350 cubic inch and the TH350 transmission, we took it out and we sold that as a set to somebody. He's using it in a hot rod for himself. We found another donor block. We rebuilt it, 350, four bolt main. Um, it's got a cam. Uh, it's got flat top pistons. It's also got uh, Edelbrock RPM intake and it's got Fitec fuel injection. The air conditioning on this truck works. When I was looking for a truck, I wanted one with factory air. Cruise control, aftermarket, Dakota Digital. We installed this before our trip to Georgia. Works A1. Same thing with the air conditioning. Works great. Uh, we were having alternator issues, but the problem we were having with it wasn't necessarily a bad alternator. It was the cables weren't uh, doing their job. They were almost 50-year-old cables. So when we replaced that cable, the ground cable, and another one, uh, that seemed to fix our charging issue. We've also got Sanderson stainless steel headers, and they go back into dual exhaust, two and a half inch stainless steel from Lyles, an exhaust company here in Canada. Um, and they exit out the back, as you saw previously in the video, through the side. And at one point in time, we were chasing down a noise uh, throughout the drivetrain somewhere. We could not find it. And in an attempt to find that noise, we did replace the clutch fan. We also replaced the hanger bearing. We also changed the fluid, the differential thinking, well, maybe it had water, maybe it was bearings, maybe it was something back there. But we tended to fix that problem when we adjusted the pinion angle. The noise went away. Go figure. Once upon a time, on my way back from the campground where we were staying, um, I was driving the truck in the fog and I hit a baby deer. So it took out the grill. Uh, it pushed the bumper back just ever so slightly so that you can almost see the protrusion on the bumper bolts. Uh, it bent up this piece here a little bit as well as this piece of stainless. Other than that, uh, we found the part, the grill necessary to put it back in from a 77 and I was satisfied with the repair. We've upgraded the headlights uh, to a halogen setup, not LED, but if you wanted to go LED, that's entirely up to you. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it at the beginning or not, but this is an original paint truck. With the exception of the tailgate, which I had to paint, and the cab corners and rockers, everything on this truck is original. The hood, the doors, uh, all the back, the fenders, all that is original. I wanted to keep this as original as possible, uh, but I will go over some of the small defects in the paint later on in this video when we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And one more thing under the hood here is that when I bought the truck, the master cylinder was bad, didn't have much for brakes, so we did put a new master cylinder on it. Uh, regrettably, I did not clear coat it uh, before I put it on, so it is a little rusty looking there. Thought I could clean that up, paint it black if you wanted to. And it also has a brand new radiator. As we make our way into the interior, when I initially did the cab corners and rocker panels, I also had some of this Dynamat type product that we installed in the floor to help quiet this cab down. And between the Dynamat product and the insulation, inside of this cab is surprisingly not that bad. As you can see, we upgraded the seat to an OBS seat, an old body style truck, an 88 to 98 style truck. Uh, I believe this one was actually out of a 94, maybe a 97 work truck. Um, and we did a video on that converting the old bench seat I'll leave that link right up here to this OBS. It's all factory brackets from the bench seat on the original, and we just kind of modified it to fit this seat. We also got rid of the old carpet, uh, and as you'll see, 
when this is all said and done, uh, we'll be putting that carpet back into this truck. With the help of Retro Manufacturing, they gave me a sponsorship so that we were able to upgrade to a Bluetooth radio uh, that fits in the factory holes. This dash has not been cut up, and when you turn this on, uh, it's all a digital display right down here, so you don't have to worry about not being able to be connected or play your favorite tunes. And along with the retro manufacturing upgrade, we added the kick panel speakers here on the driver's side, as well as the passenger side. And behind the seat, we got six by nines in boxes. As I mentioned earlier, we installed cruise control, the Dakota Digital, so we do have a factory style controller here, which I've fished the wires down through. One of my only regrets on this truck is not installing tilt. Although we still run the factory steering column, tilt would have been nice on that long trip to Georgia. So another thing I'll show you while we're in here is all the gauges work. Shows that it's charging, lots of oil pressure at idle, and the temperature is slowly starting to come up, although it's only 27 degrees out here today. And the gas gauge is showing just under a quarter of a tank. And here in New Brunswick, Canada, our vehicles have to pass a safety inspection once every two years. This passed a safety inspection right out of the gate before I did anything to it with the exception of the uh, master cylinder. The emergency brake works, all the brakes work, uh, no pulsation when you're stepping on the brakes, uh, wipers work, and, uh, and this thing will be due for inspection here in New Brunswick come August. Uh, if you're in Canada and you need it inspected, we can do that. We have a shop right here. We can get it up in the air for you. Uh, if you want to see the underside of this truck, again, go back and look at any of my old videos where we actually had the box off, where I did the C-notch kit in the rear. You will see what kind of shape this truck is in. When we did the Fitec fuel injection, we did an in-tank pump, uh, but we also put a brand new gas tank in it. So that's got a brand new gas tank in there. Uh, 20 gallon, I believe. It's the long one because it's a long bed. And I believe that based on my trip to Georgia, uh, you could probably stretch it to about 300 miles on a tank of fuel. We averaged, uh, on average, I say, about uh, 15 and a half miles per gallon with this thing. Uh, depends on the terrain you're driving on. There was one day where we were driving fairly flat going down from Virginia to Tennessee, I believe. And I think that uh, stretch, we got about uh, well over 18 miles per gallon, uh, but we you're doing a lot of mountainous driving up and down hills and stuff like that. And we were having the cruise control set at like 65, 70 mile an hour. So I still have the original seat sitting over here in the corner of the original bench seat. If you were inclined to want that with the truck, you're more than welcome to take it. All the brackets are still there on the bottom of the seat that's in there. So it would just be a matter of, you know, half a day's work, changing things back over. Some of the other things that we had to do as part of regular maintenance in here uh, was we had to replace the ignition switch, the keyed switch here, as well as the switch down on the actual column. One day, the key just wouldn't turn. So we replaced the ignition cylinder. Uh, and uh, when we went to go put that in, we found that the ignition switch itself wasn't quite making contact only about 50% of the time. We tried to adjust it as much as possible at the end. We ended up just simply putting a new ignition switch in it, as well as the key. And uh, so that is all new. Also, we replaced the cigarette lighter uh, so that it works so you can charge your phone. So step number five actually kind of ties in a little bit with the previous step, number four, talking about your vehicle. But specifically, you really need to be upfront and honest with people and show them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, we talked already a lot about the good and how we've upgraded a lot of things and how we've made this truck a little more comfortable to drive. Uh, how we've added fuel injection for a little better ease of uh, use for those who are not mechanically inclined as far as carburetors go, kind of like me. Um, again, it's an easy switchover if you wanted to go back to uh, a carburetor. Um, so I'm going to point out a few things on this truck that if you were buying it, you would probably want to know. So let's get at it. So as I mentioned earlier, this truck is an original paint truck, again, with the exception of the cab corners, rockers, and the bottom of the fenders. Uh, it's original paint. The hood... The hood, the roof, the doors, the, the side panels, the box panels, all are original, but they're flawed. Why are they flawed? Because this is a 50-year-old truck with original paint. Uh, so I want to point out some of these flaws. Some will need attention at some point in time. Uh, others, like, you could probably let it go for a long time and never have to worry about it. Like I would do if I was going to continue to own this truck. The front fenders. 
are showing little signs. There's actually a little tiny pinhole right there, uh, little signs of rust that come through a little bit right there. And you're gonna say, well, Jason, why wouldn't you replace the whole fender when, instead of just replacing the patch? It's easy. An original paint vehicle is only original paint one time. So I wanted to preserve as much of that as possible. And I'm okay with nicks and picks and scratches and rust as long as it looks good. And I believe, I'm biased, but I believe in my opinion, this truck really does look good. Uh, the hood, it's got a small little crack or a little hole right there. And the paint has worn off uh, a little bit along here. It's pretty thin. It's patina guys, kinda, uh, if that's what you wanna call it. Uh, there are some imperfections in the paint. Looks like somebody drugged something across here. Uh, a little wear mark there. There's something up there. Uh, there are picks and scratches and bug dents and whatnot all over this truck. There's the rust on this fender. Come up and along the top of that trim. As we get down here by the door, you'll see there's some rust down on the bottom of the door. And if we open this door, uh, you'll see it's not terrible. There's no holes through or anything like that. Um, and it's an actually still in really good shape. We cannot say the same for the driver's side door. Although on the outside, it looks pretty good. On the inside, she's seen better days. There's actually some crap still in there. I didn't want to touch it too much simply because I didn't want to be poking bigger holes in it and force myself to make a repair. Uh, same thing down here. There's uh, the same idea right down in there and a small little hole uh, right here. Once again, guys, you can patch the bottoms of these doors, these panels, these patch panels are available, um, and try to preserve as much of the original part of the door as you want. If you're buying this truck with the idea of doing a complete restoration, repairing all the panels or replacing all the panels, by all means, do it. But you simply lose the original paint idea uh, of this of this truck. Uh, on the box sides, both box sides are similar. Uh, the top uh, is just showing again signs of wear and age. Uh, but down here, uh, this is solid. Here, we got some picks and scratches up here. On the driver's side, uh, it does have a hole right there. And again, you can buy these patch panels and just kind of patch that in, which is what I would good which is what I would do if I was going to keep the truck. But it's a fairly simple job if, you're in, if you've got the talent and the know-how, otherwise you gotta pay someone to do it for you. The tailgate is not original. I did have to find another tailgate because the other one was rusty uh, and I did paint that and swapped all the trim over. Over here behind this wheel well on the back, on the passenger side, not as bad. No major holes, just, uh, just starting to show some age there. Up here on the roof, you can tell where something's been drug across the roof a time or two. A little bit of a dent right there. And uh, the windshield, I don't know if it's an original windshield. I'm guessing maybe it probably was uh, because of the way that this is all discolored, this trim here. This normally would be chrome, uh, but there are no leaks. Uh, none of the windows, none of the doors leak. The uh, side vent windows do not open. Previous owner has uh, got some gunk or some goo in here. Uh, to hold that shut. Maybe they leaked. Uh, maybe they wouldn't stay closed. Maybe he was trying to keep the wind noise down. I don't know. Both vent windows are sealed up. I think if you could get those cut open, they would open uh, because they're still in good shape, but I would think it would be time to probably replace some seals. Speaking of seals, I did replace uh, the inner and outer trim here uh, to help keep water from going down inside the door and rotting it any further than it may already be. Of course, the wipers are good. Again, as you can see, uh, based, you might not be able to see it by my reflection, uh, but the dash is cracked here, as well as the, all the common places up here by the speaker. Um, again, I believe it to be an original dash. Uh, no reason to believe otherwise. I think at some point, somebody has either replaced this bezel uh, or replaced this bezel. The truck is a Scottsdale. It's got the Scottsdale wood grain here. Uh, but it doesn't have the wood grain on this bezel uh, nor on the doors. So I'm not quite sure what kind of trim this would have been. If you guys know anything about square bodies at all is that the trim packages never ever made sense. Unless you went with like a Silverado and it came with pretty much everything. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the trim in here, I don't think uh, matches 100%.
Maintenance-wise, the fluids have always uh, been changed. Uh, obviously, the antifreeze was changed when we rebuilt the motor. Uh, also, the... Um, Oil changes were done on a regular basis. I bought the truck with 81,000 original miles on it. It now has 96,000. Although I've had it for over four years, the truck has had regular oil changes on it. When I did my trip to Georgia, I, I did an oil change. When I came back from that, obviously, 3,000 miles on that trip. So I did one uh, within about two weeks of each other simply because of the mileage that I put on on that trip. Uh, the rear diff fluid has been changed. Uh, we've been, of course, topping up the power steering fluid, so that should be good uh, until it leaks out, but we will be getting that fixed. Uh, we did have the alignment done when we did all the front end, so all of that's good. The tires don't seem to be wearing AC. The AC system is old. I retrofitted from R12 to R134A simply by adding the adapters to the, to the pipes. Uh, and when I top it up, it works great. Uh, usually it will last until the following year and then you got to top it up again. So if there's a slow leak in there somewhere, well, there might be. Um, but otherwise, I'm happy with it. I specifically wanted an AC truck. I got it and it works. So step number six may vary uh, depending on whether you're simply posting an ad or whether you're doing a video like I am. If you are doing a video, just follow the steps right up to the point that I'm at. As far as doing a Facebook Marketplace ad, a Craigslist ad, or whatever type of ad, add pictures. Lots of pictures. I believe Facebook only allows you to do 20. Fill it up. Add as many pictures as you can. We don't want to see a hundred, we don't want to see 20 pictures of the outside. We want to see probably five or six of the outside. We want to see five or six of the inside. We want to see the engine bay. We want to see the tires. Um, if you are so inclined to do tread depth uh, on the tires. If you can get underneath, we want to see underneath. Uh, I'm not going to do underneath pictures on my truck because I've got all kinds of video proof of the shape of this truck. It's in really good shape. But make sure you're adding all the pictures that you're allowed to. You can never add too many pictures unless it's the wrong thing and unless the pictures suck. Like, for instance, if you take a picture and you're getting close-ups like this, no. Make sure you're getting what you're intending to get in the picture frame uh, so that everybody can see exactly what you're talking about. Um, the other thing is description. I've been showing you guys everything that I have done to this truck and telling you everything that I have done to this truck. I've shown you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Put those into words. When I'm looking at a Facebook ad, the longer the description, the better it is for me. I want to know everything because if I don't, I'm going to be messaging you or calling you and asking you the questions uh, of the things that you have left out. So if the biggest thing I can tell you uh, about step number six and about your ad, as many pictures as you can and as much information as you can. You don't want to be bombarded by people asking a bunch of stupid questions. Answer them before they have a chance to ask. The final thing is price. Make sure you are pricing according to the market. You may believe that your vehicle is worth more than the average. If so, it all leads back to everything we've talked about in this video. Price, pictures, condition, description, all that stuff plays a part in how much money you can get. Do I believe my truck is worth more than one found on the side of the road that hasn't been touched in 30 years? Absolutely. Do I think it's Barrett Jackson quality and I'm going to get you know, 60, 70,000 out of it. Not at all. I believe that everything that I've done with this truck mechanically, as well as cosmetically, and all the maintenance that we've done, all the little upgrades, the cruise control, the air conditioning, and just simply the condition and the way the truck shows, I believe it is an above. And in fact, I'm probably biased, but I believe it's an above average condition truck for what it is. You guys who know these trucks, who know all about them and where to look and what to, what to find, um, in my opinion, once I get the carpet back in here, once I get the power steering fixed, you can get in this truck and you could drive this home no matter where you live in North America. Are you going to have any problems going home? The likelihood is very, very low. I never say never because things happen, but uh, you could get in this and you could drive it home no matter where you were driving it to. That brings us to the price. Taking into account everything that I have done with this truck, 
I want $27,000 Canadian. And I will flash up on the screen what today's exchange rate is on US dollars because a majority of my audience is in the US. That should put it roughly right around the 20,000 US dollar range. So if you think that this truck is worth 20 grand, DM me, email me. I'm gonna leave my email right here so you guys can reach out. If you don't think it's worth that, I'm okay with you not thinking it's worth that. But don't insult me by sending me offers because quite frankly, I will ignore lowball offers. I would love to see you come look at and drive this truck and appreciate the value that's in it. Just because you can't afford 20,000 US or $27,000 Canadian doesn't mean I should be discounting my truck. If you can afford it and you think the value is not quite there, talk to me, reach out to me, tell me what you're thinking. If I can answer any questions, I will do whatever I can to help make the sale of this truck so much easier. It is a tough decision to make for me to sell this truck after putting all the time and effort uh, into this truck. You guys know in the summertime, I daily drive this thing. And even my wife says, you will regret selling it. And yes, I will 100%. I'm already regretting making this video, but I've got bigger plans. I want to get into a square body Suburban and I want it to be two wheel drive. I want to do a lot of the similar things that I did to this, but I also want to go modern drivetrain. I also want to go possibly with airbag suspension. Things that I've never dabbled in before, I want to try and I want to do it on a Suburban. When I was looking for this truck, in fact, uh, I had in the back of my mind if the right Suburban came along, but this truck came along. This is what I bought, obviously. I've made it my own. If you're looking at the lettering on the door, you can keep that on there if you like. You're more than happy to. But because it's pinstripe, it does remove very easily. Uh, so if you want to take that off, put your own on there, you can. Uh, so don't let that deter you from buying the truck. That will come off. I believe a lot of the old folks will tell you if you use oven cleaner on a reg, uh, it will soften up that, uh, that paint and you can wipe it right down and not affect the factory paint. So guys, I hope you learned a little bit on what it takes to sell a vehicle. This is the official for sale video for Dale the truck. But I also added some extra information in there for you guys uh, that may help you get the most value out of your vehicle that you're trying to sell. Again, no matter whether it's a daily driver, a hot rod, a motorcycle, an RV, all of these steps will apply. So make sure that you are adding all of these steps. And I may have left some out. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they're not exclusive. But the long and short of it is, if you can give as much information via text or pictures, that's the best option that you can do for anybody so they can gain as much information as possible before they make the decision to call you, message you, or make a trip to come see your vehicle. Although this is the official for sale video for Dale the Truck, it is not likely going to be the last because if it does sell, we will make sure that we show you guys uh, that process and who bought it, whether it's going stateside, whether it's staying in Canada, maybe it's even staying local, who knows? And guys, I do have some new merch on the website. So if you're looking for your very own old car guy university style tee, uh, I've got those on there available in many colors and sizes. I uh, hope you can support the channel to help me move forward in growing my channel. And I end every video with saying, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.